In this video, we're going to be building knowledge bases for LLM-based SQL chains. By building a well-structured knowledge base consisting of SQL queries, organizations can leverage the expertise of a single SQL expert to empower multiple employees, essentially giving employees the skills and tools needed to extract valuable insights from data with LLMs. When using a service like ChatGPT to write code, you typically need to paste in relevant context for the LLM to return something useful. The context can be similar code or anything that helps the LLM understand the task. But this way of working is impractical and can be automated with a framework like Langchain that lets you connect LLMs to needed data sources in a single application. Knowledge spaces also allow us to generate more advanced SQL queries by using few shot prompting techniques. We can build examples of SQL queries and detailed schema information into LLM prompts and this is going to lead to fewer prompting errors and allow us to build data products a lot faster with LLMs. Here's an overview of how it works. You'll have your SQL expert create a collection of relevant SQL queries. The queries will be vectorized and loaded into a vector database. Now you can enable vector similarity search on these SQL statements, essentially building racks for SQL generation. You'll need the functions that allows you to extract the detailed schema information from the database this will also be built into the chains. Now you can do the prompt engineering, essentially injecting the relevant SQL statements alongside with the schema information into your prompt templates. And now you have everything you need to formulate a chain that generates advanced executable SQL based on a prompt. In this video, I'm going to be using Redis as the vector database for storing the example queries. And then I'll be using Google BigQuery as the main SQL database we want to query. And to illustrate the use of the knowledge base, I'm going to attack a well-known problem with fetching analytics data in BigQuery, dealing with nested data structures using the onNest operator. I'll share a link to the tutorial and Colab notebook below this video. Let's get started. All right, so here we have the Colab notebook I'm preparing. We need a bunch of libraries. We need Langchain, of course. We need OpenAI or Anthropic. I'm installing both. I'm going to use sentence transformers to create the embeddings, SQL Alchemy to connect to the SQL database, in this case, BigQuery, and we need Redis in order to be able to build the knowledge base. And of course, I have my .env file and my gpq key.json file, which is my service account key that allows me to connect to BigQuery. I'm going to specify a project, a data set, and the service account key path, and then I can connect with SQL database using the full URL. And the dataset I'm connecting to is the same dataset I've used in an earlier video, GBQ Chat, which is an e-commerce dataset consisting of customers, orders, and products. And it has repeated records and nested fields, which makes it a bit more interesting to work with. So first, I'm going to illustrate the problem we are facing using a simple create SQL chain. So one of Lang chains off-the-shelf chains that allows you to chat with the database. I'm going to connect to OpenAI and Anthropic. I usually use both GPT-4 and Cloud3 Opus. And then I'm going to set up a simple chain using create SQL chain that connects to the database using GPT-4. And with this chain, we can start asking questions. And I'm going to ask a very simple question. I'm going to ask how many customers are in the dataset. And as you can see, this is leading to a database error. And this is a common problem with repeated records. Now we want the LLM to deal with this. And I already showed you in the last couple of videos that we can extract detailed schema information from BigQuery and build our own chains, which is gonna make things more robust. And now we're going to add an extra element to this, which is few shot prompting. That's going to make things even more robust. I'm going to use Redis as the vector store to store the SQL query examples that we need for few shot prompting. And to connect to Redis, I need the host port and password. I'm going to connect both with Redis Pi and with the Langchain Redis connector. The Langchain Redis connector needs the full Redis URL. And I don't have the Redis information in my environment file, so I'm setting this with OS. Then I'm going to import Redis, which is the Redis Pi library. And I'm going to import Redis from Langchain Victor Stores. I'm setting up the connection using Redis Pi and the host port and password. You don't need the Redis Pi connection to do this. I'm just using it because I'm used to using Redis Pi. I'm just going to ping the database and make sure we have a connection. And we do. And then I'm going to flush it and make sure it's empty.
Next up, we're going to take a look at the SQL query examples. I have a list of dictionaries here that we're going to use for the few shot prompting. And let me just print the examples so that they are readable. So here we have an array of dictionaries consisting of a user input in a BigQuery SQL statement. And some of those statements contain the unnest operator. And what we're going to do is we're going to embed these input queries along with the SQL statements so that we can do vector similarity search over all the different SQL statements. And this allows us to fetch relevant SQL statements that we can then inject into the main prompt that we're using to extract insights from the SQL database. So to embed these statements, I'm first going to create some SQL vector data, which is just joining the input query along with the SQL statement. And then I'm going to import hugging face embeddings. You can use any embeddings you want. And now that I have my hugging face embeddings, I can load the SQL vector data into Redis alongside with my vector embeddings. And I'm using Langchain's Redis connector for this. And note that I'm not specifying any URL because I already set that with OS. And once we've loaded the embeddings and the SQL vector data, we can do a vector similarity search. And then I can, for instance, fetch queries that contain the statement on nest. And this will give us a lot of relevant context for the prompt we want to formulate when extracting something from BigQuery. So when you want to do few shot prompting, Langchain has a built-in example selector that will actually do vector similarity search under the hood. And that's called semantic similarity example selector. And we can import that from Langchain core example selectors. And then we set it up with the example queries, the embeddings, and the Redis instance. The example selector has a built-in method called select examples, which will do the vector similarity search and fetch the relevant examples that you need for few shot prompting. And I'm going to do two different things with this example selector. I'm going to use it in a create SQL chain, the out of the box chain from Langchain, and I'm going to use it with the chain we assembled in the last two videos, which was a custom chain where we injected our own schema information. And I'm going to start with the create SQL chain. And to do that, I'm importing a standard prompt template and a few shot prompt template. And then I'm injecting table information, the number of rows we want to fetch, and the input from the user. And this is very close to what the Langchain documentation suggests. I'm going to put a link to the documentation below the video. The table information is going to be the schema information that we get from BigQuery. And I'm going to fetch that in the same way as I did in the last two videos using two functions. The first of these two functions builds the schema description by iterating over the fields in the tables. And the second function uses the first function, the dataset ID, and the BigQuery client to fetch the schema information. And then I just need a BigQuery client. So I'm going to import BigQuery from Google Cloud, and I'm going to import service account from Google Auth2. And then I'm going to use the service account key to set up the connection. And this allows me to fetch the detailed schema and table information for the BigQuery dataset. And as you can see here, we get the detailed information on the tables and the fields for each table. So now I can inject this into the prompt template. So I'm passing the GBQ schema information to table info. So now in our prompt, we have the detailed schema information for the tables, and we have the SQL statements or the examples of SQL queries. And now the create SQL chain should have everything it needs to formulate the query based on my input. So I'm going to formulate the create SQL chain using GPT-4, the database connection, and the prompt we just set up. And here we have the same problem once again, a problem with array struct. And this is why I prefer to take control over the chain building and build my own custom SQL chains. And luckily, we can easily do that in our case. So I'm just going to formulate a prompt alternative. And here I just have two input variables. I'm injecting the schema, so the same schema I was extracting before. I'm going to use that again. And then I'm injecting the input from the user. 
And I need two things for this. I'm going to need a string output parser that's going to pass the output from the LLM as a string, and I need a runnable pass through. Then I'm using my fetch schemas function to inject the schema in a runnable pass through. And then I'm assembling all the components, the runnable pass through, the prompt, the language model, in this case, GPT-4 and the string output parser to a SQL chain. And if I run this and ask how many customers are there, I'm going to get a response as a SQL statement. And I can just run this statement using my BigQuery client. Or you could use SQL Alchemy if you prefer that. Again, like in the two last videos, this seems to be the more robust solution at the moment. And of course, we can also ask more complicated questions, such as list the five customers with the highest spend, and then we simply execute the response with the BigQuery client. So assembling your own chains and injecting your own schema information seems to be a robust solution when you want to generate advanced SQL. And adding few shot prompting to this is going to make it even more robust. All right, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.